Let's connect the button to the daisy. Hi, this is Takumi from Electrosmith. In the previous tutorial, we were able to change the pitch of an oscillator by twisting a knob. In this video, we'll learn how to connect the button to the daisy seed and turn the oscillator tone on or off with it. Okay, let's get started right away. For this tutorial, all we need is a single button and two jumper wires. Button or switch is a commonly used component that can close a circuit and let current run through, or open the circuit and stop the current from running through. For example, we have an LED here, which turns bright when there's a current running through it. We'll learn more about LED in the next video, by the way. And we have a resistor to limit the excess current running through in order to prevent the LED from burning out. And when we connect one end to the positive power rail that we created in the previous tutorial, and connect the other end to the ground rail, the LED lights up since the circuit is complete. Now let's introduce a button to this. So we'll connect one of the buttons pinned to the ground rail, and then the other to the LED. Because we're using a button that is a momentary switch, the circuit will be open until we press down on it. Notice how the LED is off right now? When we press down, the circuit is closed and the current is running through now, which makes the LED light up. As you can imagine, we can use this on-off interaction with the daisy. Any of these pins that have the letter D, which stands for digital, can read the input as on or off. More precisely, 1 or 0, which is digital. And you may see the term high or low as well. For this tutorial, we'll be using pin D26. So here's one of the ways we can connect the button to the daisy. I'll show you a simpler circuit in a few minutes, so no need to recreate this first one. One pin of the button is connected to a ground rail, and another pin is connected to the daisy's digital pin, as well as a resistor that's connected to the positive power rail. When the button is not pressed down, the daisy's digital pin will read the input as high or on, since the only connection is to the 3.3 volt through a resistor due to the button being open and making the circuit incomplete. Once the button is pressed, the circuit from the daisy's pin directly to ground will be complete, which will be a stronger connection than that to the positive rail with resistance due to the resistor. So, the daisy's pin will see that signal as low or off. That resistor is known as a pull-up resistor. Luckily for us, the daisy seed has an internal pull-up resistor that we can use, which will make this resistor that's connected to the positive power rail not required. We'll be telling the daisy to use the internal pull-up resistor via code shortly. So here's a simpler way of connecting the button to the daisy. Just one pin to the ground rail, and the other pin to pin D26. And that's it! Okay, let's start programming. Similar to the previous tutorial, let's use a serial monitor to make sure that the button is working. The code is available to download for your convenience. We'll use the switch class that comes with the Daisy Duino library. So in order to use it, we need to have the line include daisyduino.h. Then we'll add serial begin 9600 so that we can use the serial monitor. And let's set up the button next. We'll use Daisy Duino's button init function. The 1000 is the update rate in Hertz, true for inversion, which I'll explain shortly, 26 is pin D26, and finally, input pull-up for using the internal pull-up resistor as mentioned earlier. Because we inverted, the input is now going to be low when the button is not pressed and high when it is pressed down. This feels a bit more intuitive. In the void loop, we'll first add button debounce, which will debounce and process the input of the button press. And finally, we print out the output of the function button pressed. The pressed function will either return 0 or 1, depending on the state of the button press. So when we press the button, it will return a 1, and when we let go of the button, it will return a 0. Okay, let's flash and see if the button is working as expected. Nice! Now the fun begins. In the previous tutorial, we mapped the potentiometer's value to the oscillator's amplitude. 
So we can perhaps have a variable called amp button that's mapped to the button state and use that with the set amp function. Seems like a pretty straightforward approach, so let's give it a try and see if it'll work. So we'll open up the code from our previous tutorial and first add switch button and float amp button. Then we'll change the OSC set amp amp knob in my callback to OSC set amp amp knob times amp button. We'll also add the debounce function here too. Then in setup, we add that line for initializing the button. And we'll use sine wave for this demo, by the way. Finally, in void loop, we'll add the line amp button equals button pressed. So when we press the button, the amplitude of the oscillator tone should be 1 multiplied by the value of the amp knob variable, which I'll turn all the way up to 1.0. And when we let go of the button, the oscillator volume will be 0 or off. Okay, I'll flash the code and show you how it sounds. The note sounds a bit too clicky. This is because the variable is going from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 too fast. So we'll want to smooth that out. We can ramp up from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 a bit slower or by a lot if we wanted to. This ramping up to a maximum value is called attack in the synth world. And the ramping down to a lower value that starts after reaching the max value is called a decay. We'll set the target value as 0.0. .0. This change in sound is called an envelope. You may have seen the terms attack, decay, sustain, and release or ADSR. We'll talk about sustain and release in a future video. We'll be using Daisy Duino's ADM class, which will generate attack and decay envelope. We'll start by deleting the line amp button equals button pressed. Next, we'll go up to the top and add static ADM ADM. Then in my callback, we'll add the following lines. If button rising edge, ADM trigger. This means that if the button is pressed down, we'll generate or trigger the attack decay envelope. Then inside the for loop, we'll add the line amp button equals ADM process to process that envelope. This is similar to the float sign signal equals OSC process from the audio output video. And we need to move the set freak and set amp functions inside of the for loop. Otherwise, we'll hear an artifact noise. We'll discuss more about what this my callback even is and the purpose of the for loop in a future video. Finally, let's specify the envelope that we're generating. So we'll initialize it first. Now we can set the attack time with this line. Since the unit is in second, the attack envelope will go from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 in 50 milliseconds. And we'll do something similar for decay. Let's do 500 milliseconds. And we'll set the minimum value as 0.0, .0 and the max value as 1.0. Finally, we'll set the curve as 0.0. .0. So, the envelope ramps up from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 in 50 milliseconds, 
And after it reaches that max value, it will ramp down to 0.0, .0 in 500 milliseconds. Okay, let's flash and hear it in action. Awesome, success! I recommend experimenting with different attack and decay times. For example, here's a slow attack and decay. As you can imagine, it will be fun to connect two more potentiometers to our synth and have real-time control over the attack and release times. Now that we can trigger a sound with a button, what's next? In the next tutorial, let's learn how to light up an LED so that we can add visual feedback to our synth. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.